Hello, this is Brian Kinghorn and this is the fifth in our series of videos on genetic markers and today we're talking about setting up and using the genomic relationship matrix. So these are the videos we've had in this series already, coding the markers in the main data file, managing individual markers and in the next video, sex linked markers. And in the previous video to this one, we had handling multiple lethal recessives and multiple gene edits. And these are specialist niche applications, so we concentrated on describing the circumstances you would use these under. And if you want to implement them, that's quite simple, but you have to look in the manual. Today, we're looking at setting up and using the genomic relationship matrix. Now, first of all, just a word about genomic EBVs. MateCell reads in these from your data files, so of course we do handle them, but we do not create them. You have to read them in, so that's not included in MateCell or in this video. So otherwise, first of all, we're going to be talking about delivering your GRM to mate cell with the cherry picking approach we introduced a few years ago. Then we'll talk about automatic imputation of relationships where you've got missing information. Then control on how to use your GRM in mate cell. We'll give a quick demonstration run. We'll have a little section on which GRM you should use. Then we have to note that using the GRM is slower than using the NRM and the reasons for this. And finally, we'll look at the using the GRM facility for other purposes than just genomic relationships. First, we'll look at how to set up your GRM and to deliver it to MateCell. A few years ago, we introduced what we call a cherry picking approach, which is a much simpler approach to maintaining a resource of relationships in a data file. And we call that file CAND for candidate GRM. This is a top half filled GRM and you can have bottom and full as well, as described in the manual. This is full, but if you want to save space, you can have top or you can have bottom triangle. So of course you must develop this outside mate cell. You can have missing elements so that for instance, the relationship between George and Maisie, if you don't know it, you can enter as this figure here or less. And you can have whole individuals missing, which means that if you don't have the DNA test results for George, you can omit his whole row and whole column. And what MateCell does is actually append these later and fill those with this missing relationship code of minus five nines. You can include extra individuals that are not candidates in your run, which means that, of course, if individuals lose candidate status in future runs, you can still keep them here in this file and just continue to add to it and do weeding out of obsolete information in the long run. The important thing, though, is to keep this GRM square the same number of rows and columns and the same order of individuals in the columns and in the rows. So we could have individual elements or complete rows and columns with this missing information code. And this is how we do imputation. Let's say we have a relationship between individuals one and two that we do not know, but we may have some knowledge of relationships amongst their parents, up to four possible pieces of information. If we have all the bits of information, we look at the relationship between sire one and the sire of two, the sire of one and the dam of two, etc., and take the average of those relationships to impute the missing relationship between one and two. So we do this down the whole pedigree, first of all, for where we can make four parental matches. Then we go back to the beginning and do it for three parental matches, two and one. So on the console, if you have had this happen and it happens automatically, you don't have to ask for it, then you get output like this, the number of individuals in your GRM and the number of candidates that are not represented in it and the total number of elements that are missing. And then you get a report about how many elements have been imputed at the four different levels with the best quality information coming, of course, when you have four parental matches. For those elements that are still not represented in the GRM and cannot be imputed, these are set to the mean GRM off diagonal value plus one standard deviation amongst those values. So in this case, for this pig data set, it was a mean of this value. The standard deviation of the GRA elements was this value. And so the missing elements are actually set to that mean plus one standard deviation. And we do that to discourage the fact that individuals missing information might be seen as lowly related to the rest of the population. And we rather penalize them than give them that benefit. Now, if you don't like the way this is done, of course, you can have your own way of imputing these missing relationships and present that as a fait accompli in your GRM as you present it to MateCell. Now we look at how you control your use of GRM in MateCell. And it's this one line in MateCell any, you have an integer here for the parameter read GRM. And the default zero is to use the NRM. And then one, two, and three are for using your GRM for co-ancestry calculations. That's for genetic diversity. 
you can use the GRM for calculating progeny inbreeding, or with a value of three, you use the GRM to do both, manage co-ancestry and report on inbreeding values. And lastly, we've got these three elements here, 91, 92, 93. If you use one of these, Matecell will create a file called cannednrm.txt and it will be full, top or bottom filled with nrm elements. So that's a facility for how you might use such a matrix as a template for other applications altogether. So now let's move on and look at the demonstration run. And there's not really much to see compared to a normal run because we're just dealing with different numbers in the relationship matrix. This is an example from plant breeding where the pedigree was not complete and yet we have a complete genomic relationship matrix. And the first thing you can notice is that the scale for inbreeding goes negative in this case, just because of the way that the relationships have been calculated. So from minus 0.7 upwards, and you see the same scale here. And also for individual co-ancestries, this is the co-ancestry of each individual with the rest of the population, the male parents, female parents and progeny. And in fact, we have individuals that are of negative average co-ancestry with the rest of the population. Other than that, the run is rather similar to what you would normally do with a numerator relationship matrix. But of course, the outcome and properties are somewhat different. And here's another run, which is in fact the pig breeding example I showed you earlier with imputation. And here you can see that same output on the console showing the imputation results. Also here, there's the minimum progeny inbreeding for key related mating. So we do have some pedigree in, in this data set. And something of note is that the full sibs have quite a high relationship. This means that the minimum inbreeding coefficient for a full sib mating is 0.45. And yet for the parent offspring, the minimum inbreeding is much less. Now that might be, for example, for this mother son, that the mother and the mate used to get that son are very lowly related so that the mother and the son are in fact moderately lowly related as well. So if we go and look at the progeny inbreeding, I shall invoke that constraint to try and get below that value for mother son, which was shown by an asterisk here. Let's resume. And so these are the inbreeding coefficients from the genomic relationship matrix being reduced below that value because we don't want to have mother-son matings, for example, in this data set, albeit that all the inbreeding coefficients and co-ancestries are calculated from genomic relationships. So you'll see, of course, here that the scale is again not starting at zero, also here for inbreeding and also for co-ancestry here. It's the same as we had before. I'll just briefly consider which GRM to use. This is a decision that you make outside of MateCell, of course. And this paper by Theo Meursen and colleagues is very useful, Management of Genetic Diversity in the Era of Genomics. And this is looking at quite fundamental components here with six methods to calculate the GRM plus the NRM. And they found that the implications for genetic drift and increased homozygosity do not fully align. So that which GRM you use depends on what your objectives are in these things. The best relationship matrix was GLA which is an identity by descent GRM based on linkage analysis, and it gave the best control and the best genetic gain per unit of increase in inbreeding. It was closely followed by a good pedigree NRM, and the word good is from me. That's where, in this case, the pedigree was complete and for a good number of generations, which we may not have in practice. And of course, there are many other ways to construct a GRM apart from the fundamental components used here. We can use the GRM blended with the NRM, and secondly, we can modify the NRM, for example, to target specific genomic regions for management of diversity and inbreeding. In the manual, we have a suggestion about how to make the balance across these different regions. If you have a consensus GRM going across regions, then you can import the solution for that run into runs where you have GRMs that are targeting specific regions. That way you can find out to what extent a consensus GRM that you would actually use in the end, how that impacts on the different regions that you want to control. And what do you control? Well, there has been some concern in the dairy industry that regions surrounding major QTL are losing genetic diversity. And so there's a desire to control inbreeding in those regions. But quite contrary to that, there is also a proposition that you should reduce the level of control in the regions of QTL so that you can make more response in them. And that has been shown here. So that's all up to you. But we think that MateCell can be used for you to do some investigations in this area. So I'll just say something briefly about when to use a GRM. It's good for when your pedigree is dubious 
Of course, that may mean that you've got quite a lot of missing information, but it could be that you've got multiple poorly connected lines, bloodlines, countries. So you might have had some admixture quite recently. And under that circumstance, of course, the genomic information is more useful. You may want to avoid recording pedigree altogether, and we've got some mate cell users who have moved in that direction. The GRM might also be useful for where you've got large full sib families, for example, after using multiple ovulation and embryo transfer. And the reason there is that you not only tend to select the better individuals out of the full sib families, but you will tend to co-select genomically less related full sibs. Now, I mentioned before that using the GRM in mate cell is slower, and there are two reasons for that, the red one and two. So this is a reminder that at the core of optimal contributions, we've got genetic gain and genetic diversity, and this X prime AX co-ancestry calculation takes a lot of time. And A, of course, can be the NRM or the GRM. So with an NRM, we often find that there are zero elements, especially for shallow pedigrees. And when we make the calculations, we don't use those zero elements in calculations. We get rid of them and use some linearization and also avoid duplication of mirrored elements. And that way we get a lot faster calculations, but the GRM has no zero elements in generally, and that means that you can't exploit that. Secondly, we've got this neat trick of Jacques Golot, which is similar to Hendersonian rules to calculate AX quickly. And from that, we get XAX rather quickly. And that works nicely for pedigrees that are not so deep. However, we cannot use this for the GRM because the GRM is empirically calculated and does not follow the pedigree rules. So now I'll move on to non-standard ways of using this GRM facility. I call it cheating and a key example is to use a dummy individual to represent a large group. So here we can consider that we've got a small three by three relationship matrix between George, Mildred and Gabrielle, but we also have a large number of individuals in a particular region and we'll call that females in region six. So we add a row and column for females in region six. And in this case here, for example, we are looking at the average relationship between George and females in region six. Now we can do that if we have good pedigree information between George and females in region six or genomic information. If there is no pedigree information available, then you can see the manual for a gene flow solution, which uses history of migration of seed stock into region six. And that gives you some handle on the relationships between individuals we currently have in the pedigree and these individuals that are not connected by pedigree to George. So that's the construction of the GRM, which we will import into mate cell using read GRM equals three, most likely. And in the data file, we can have that single individual, which is females in region six, with the average index for these females, the trait EBVs, but the abs min use and max use could be set to the same number of matings that are desired. And that would be the number of individuals in that region, assuming that we want to mate them all. However, if they already have been mated, we can use the committed matings feature and not use the abs min use so that these matings will be included in the analysis as already having been made. And therefore the selections and matings that are made at the current state will take account of all that contribution that's already been made in the past. Other examples might be all sows in multiplier herd four all five-year-old cows in Devon. So you might actually have a separate group, all three-year-old cows and all four-year-old cows in Devon. And bulls in syndicate mating group two. So that might be a small group of only a few bulls, but you want to handle them as, as a single entity. And you'll see something in the manual about using that in an approach for multi-sire joining. And lastly, I'll point you to genomic mate selection in the manual if you're interested in this. What we do is instead of putting relationships in the GRM, we put something which tells us about the predicted merit and progeny. And what you can do for genomic mate selection is take account of the fact that if you mate heterozygotes with each other, you'll get more segregation in the progeny and you'll get more genetic variation in the progeny. And that's been shown to make extra genetic progress in the longer run. So that's genomically inspired mate selection in order to get extra genetic variation through segregation in the progeny and in each generation maybe something to test out. So we're coming to the end of this video, but I'll end with a little note on our feature for automatic imputation of missing relationships. It's proved to be quite handy for some groups, but please don't rely on it too much because imputation is a poor substitute for the real thing. Thank you for listening.